Hi guys! In today's video series we're going to be doing a sampler to show you some more of the techniques you can use inside of the video timeline in Photoshop. We'll be talking about keyframes, we'll be talking about positions, opacity, rotation, and layer styles. Oh, and text warp. Don't want to forget about that. So let's get started here, okay? Go ahead and kick off Photoshop and then we're going to create a new file. Come to the Film and Video tab. Choose the HDTV 1080p uh, option and then click Create. Come down to the very bottom. If you cannot see your timeline window, come up to Window and then choose Timeline to activate it. Then You'll be, you should be able to see Create Video Timeline, this little button here. If you cannot, click on the drop down and then choose Create Video Timeline from this. This is really important because if you can't see this, you're going to be in the wrong screen, okay? All right. Once you have Create Video Timeline here, click on it and then it will launch what we need for today's demonstration. All right. I am going to um, hover over the right edge of this background layer and just drag it out just a little bit to give myself a little bit more space because I know I'm going to need it. And then let's rename this layer zero. We'll need to do this over here in the layers panel. Let's just call this background. Oh, and before I forget, because we are in um, technology, we always need to save our files. So I'm going to hit Command Save, and that would be Control Save on a Windows machine. And we're going to call this uh, Keyframes, Keyframe Demo. And I'm going to save this on my computer someplace. Let's just save it to the desktop. There we go. All right, we are set and ready to go. The first thing that I want to do is I'm going to change this background color because it is annoying me. <laughs> okay, I want black. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that my color swatches on the left hand side are set to the default. So the defaults are black and white. If you can't see the defaults already, what you need to do is hit the D key on your keyboard. That will put the black in the foreground and the white in the background. Then I want you to grab your uh, your bucket tool and simply click on your selected background. You just if you can't paint it, you just have to make sure that you have the background selected. Next, let's add some text on here because that is what we're going to be flying around our stage today and manipulating. Give yourselves a new layer above the background and grab your text tool. Now obviously I don't want black text on a black background. So what I want to do is I want to change my color. Come up here to the very top where it says set text color. Click on that one time and think about this for a second. What is the hexadecimal code for white? F F F F F F. So I'm just going to go ahead and type that in. Yes, it would be easy just to put it up here in the right hand corner, but sometimes it's really helpful to know the hexadecimal code for white, which is all F's, and the hexadecimal code for all black, which is all zeros. So I thought I'd just throw that out there. Click OK, please. Go ahead and put some text on here. And honestly, it doesn't matter what your font is, but I have it a decent size, OK? I'm going to type in the words web design because that's what we are doing today. And then click OK. Now, this guy is something that we are going to fly in from the left hand side to start off with. I am going to need to make sure that this is centered vertically. So select both of your layers, one and two, by holding down the shift key and clicking on both of them. And then I want you to come up here and 
align your vertical centers. Now it's not going to matter for us right this moment to align the horizontal centers because we're going to have to do that again in just a minute. Now let's zoom out, hit command minus, give yourselves a little more space here, and hold down your shift key and click and drag on the text and just, whoop, uh, that is not the text. <laughs> click and drag on your text only. Let's see if I can just grab that one. Click text only. Holding down the shift key and drag it off the stage. Okay. You know what? I'm going to, uh, just for grins, I'm going to lock this background. That way I don't have to worry about that in the future. Okay, so now the web design is sitting over here on the left hand side. Off screen, we can't see it anymore. Before I forget, hover over the right hand side of web design and let's just drag that timeline out to meet the edge of the background timeline as well. Okay, everybody please twirl open the web design layer. You're going to see four choices here. Transform, Opacity, Style, and text, text Warp. When you work with Transform, that is all about position on the stage. Now, it could be moving from left to right, top to bottom, or any combination of those. It can also be for rotation. So the first thing that we're going to play around with today is obviously moving it onto the stage, which is traveling from left to right. So we're going to need to tell Photoshop how to do this. And we do this through keyframes. So keyframes are basically like saying, hey, Photoshop, at this particular point, I want you to do this. And then a little bit down the road, you'll, you'll put another little push pin of, ki of a kind into, the, into a spot that says, now at this particular spot, Photoshop, I want you to do this different thing. So let's see how that works. So here at the beginning, I need Photoshop to remember where this position is. So I'm going to click this little stopwatch that puts down a keyframe. And I just told Photoshop to remember this position of where this text is. Then I'm going to drag the playhead forward just a little bit because whenever you place a keyframe, it is always placed at where your playhead is. Let me say that again. When you place a keyframe, it always goes where your playhead is. So now I'm going to put down another keyframe. Oh shoot, I just goofed. <laughs> Let me Command Z, undo that. Okay, phew, Command Z is your friend. So now it remembers the original position. I move it forward and then I'm going to put down another keyframe by clicking the middle point here. Sorry about that guys. Whew. Live demos are tricky. This time we're going to move the text. All right. Hopefully I can grab it. Nope. <laughs> Okay, I might have to just hold down shift and move my arrow key to move it back to where I want it to be. To at least get it on the screen so I can grab it. There we go. And now I will move it here. And now I should be able to align these guys. There we go. I had to take off the lock on the background to do that. All right. So once you have that in place, you're going to scrub the playhead, which means move it back and forth. And you should see it fly onto the stage. So another way to do that is to hit the space bar. And you'll see it move on. Now this is obviously going a little slow, right? Oh, it's taking its own time to fly onto my screen. So if you find that you don't like 
how fast it's going, you can always click on that playhead and scooch it forward just a little bit. So let's, let, oop, I just did that. So let's, you know what, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I have a little bit more space to work with. And then I'm going to move, click and drag this little guy forward, this little keyframe, and see what it looks like now. That's much better. It's much speedier. Okay. All right. Position one is done. So now say, hey, I want to do something else. So I'm going to drag it, drag my playhead forward right here. And I'm going to tell it to remember this spot by clicking the keyframe at addition here. All right. And now let's see what would be fun. I think it would be fun if we did a rotation. So come up to, let's see, I don't usually do, <laughs> where is this on the, okay, I usually do like a transform. I usually use my uh, keyboard shortcut, so it, sometimes to find it in the menu is a little tricky. So yeah, free transform, and I'm looking for an angle. So I want to flip it 180 degrees by this time. So let's come up here to the angle and type in, type in 180 degrees. So now we can see it's all the way upside down. Click OK. And let's run that. Hit your space bar. And sure enough, it looks pretty good. Great. So now I'm going to move forward a little bit more past the third keyframe. I'm going to add another keyframe and I'm going to do another free transform. And that will also be another 180 degree rotation and click OK. And it should take us all the way back to the beginning. There it is. All right. By the way, your spacebar starts and stops the animation. You can al also use the timeline animation tools over here. This is play. This is fast forward. This is fast forward. OK, and I think this one, what does this one do? Goes to the very first frame. OK, now here's a really helpful thing. So say you are here and you want to go back one keyframe. You click on this arrow and it moves the playhead back to the previous keyframe. That can be really, really helpful when you're working with, uh, when you want to set other keyframes alongside of what you're doing here. Okay, now here's another fun thing. So we've done, the, done that particular sampler. You can do a, you, you can fly something in on the screen from left to right and do a rotation at the same time. Okay? Just for grins, we're going to do that now. Move your playhead forward a little bit. It doesn't have to be exact. Add a new keyframe. And actually, why don't we fly it off the screen and make it rotate at the same time? All right. So what we will do... <laughs> is we are going to hold down shift, drag it off the screen, and then we will also do another transform, come up to edit, come down to transform, and this time we're gonna do a 360 transform, excuse me, free transform, and this time do a 360 degree transform. Click OK. Ah, well, Photoshop, be that way. <laughs> All right, it's going to give us 180. So let's see what happens now as it goes off screen. And there it flies off. So if I wanted, to, wanted it to be a true 360 degree transform, uh, you know, rotation, I would have to add an additional keyframe where I told it to keep on going. All right. Okay, guys, so we talked about several things today. We talked about keyframes and how they're really like a pushpin to tell Photoshop to remember 
what we're doing at a particular point. And we talked about transforms where you are able to move something in on a page or you're able to rotate it. Okay, in the next movie, we will take a look at opacity. See you soon.